As soon as Chu, the main character of the story, saw the table filled with homemade food, his eyes lit up and his mouth watered. The woman, who essentially replaced his mother, inquired as to who had even asked him to leave home and live independently, to which the young man responded that he was already 27 years old and needed to take care of his own affairs. Then the women pointed out that even though he was 27 years old, he still lived here, until their conversation was interrupted by the appearance of another young man. Wang announced to his mother that he would also eat. And the woman, meanwhile, began to complain to Chu that her son was so indifferent to her that she didn't enjoy being with him at all. The young man drew the woman's attention to the fact that her son's facial expression indicated the opposite, while Huang, in the meantime, asked the young man to express his thoughts in his presence. In response, Chu ordered not to approach him so suddenly, especially not from behind, and even more so not to frighten him. To clarify the situation a bit, it should be said that when Chu was a teenager, a very serious incident occurred that completely turned his life upside down. As a result of the collapse of a large bridge, which happened for an unknown reason, many people were injured, including the young man's family. The young protagonist who survived then overheard nurses discussing that he was left completely without relatives. Since then, Chu has been alone because there was no miracle with his parents, although they lay in the intensive care unit for several days. His friend Huang came to him in the hospital a little later and offered to go home with him, saying that he had already been discharged. The landlord's wife brought him to her place and sat him at the table, starting a conversation by mentioning that hospital food wasn't that great and attempted to feed the orphan. Later, the boy found out that he perished in a car accident and his uncle was the last relative, so this woman took care of him. Chu had befriended Huang, the son of the landlord's wife, before the incident, and their friendship only grew stronger afterwards. And now, Chu was happily devouring this woman's homemade food and asked Huang to wait for him, as he had changed his mind about eating and decided to snack in the evening. While at the bus stop, Chu learned that Huang was heading for his studies, and when the latter asked where he was going, he heard a vague response suggesting he was waiting for a bus coming in 20 minutes. Huang assumed Chu was going to work, to which he replied that his job was temporary with daily payments. He went on to explain, sounding more like excuses, and then quickly shifted the conversation to the bus that was approaching. They said goodbye and Chu was left alone with his thoughts, now pondering that today's weather was quite good. In reality, he had nothing to do and slowly made his way home until he heard his phone, notifying him of a new message. From it, he learned that the package he had been waiting for had finally arrived. Tearing open the box, Chu extracted its contents, but the item revealed itself strangely, floating into the room and hovering over the ceiling like a pink tailed cloud or sphere. The unidentified object, which also spoke, introduced itself kindly as Sonny and explained that it was here to fulfill his wishes, while the tailed Sonny asked the boy to make a contract with him and become his wizard. Chu didn't hesitate, and Sonny sincerely rejoiced that he was heard, and even better, that he was understood. When the boy inquired about their agreement, the pink cloud made it clear that he simply had no other choice but to agree. Sonny justified his words by stating that Chu truly desires the fulfillment of his wish after which he pointed out that if he gave him power, he could fight for him. Even if the boy had doubts about the reality of what was happening and needed such a decision from his side, he was completely captivated by the words of the tailed one about how his deepest dream would become a reality. And he had one. Sonny told Chu that the forces of darkness, which had been sealed until now, had been unleashed and monsters had broken into the human world, which could lead to the rapid demise of humanity. The boy learned that wizards were required to destroy the monsters and renew the Seal of Darkness containment, and then added that he was glad to meet such a desperate young man and was ready to cooperate precisely with him. Before Chayo could tell his wish to Sunny, satisfied with the completed work, the first monster came to meet the newly made wizard right to his home. The boy asked the little tailed one what it was, and he calmly informed him about the appearance of the monster and then advised him to arm himself with his new tool as quickly as possible and transform into a combat form. Chu managed to grumble a bit, but there was no time for verbal arguments at all, so he armed himself with the miraculous tool and immediately felt the transformation. Literally within a few seconds, he was dressed in a battle suit and armed with a real sword. Sonny urged the boy to get rid of this monster as quickly as possible, but he couldn't believe in his transformation and spent some time getting used to his new sensations and a significant surge of strength. Chu admitted to being a bit frightened, but Sonny finally asked him not to look at him, but rather to dodge the monster's attack, which, by the way, charged into battle. The monstrous creature wasted no time and, releasing its long tentacles, quickly knocked the boy to the floor, then firmly seized Chu's body, executing a victim's capture. Chu had no intention of giving up, but soon noticed that his opponent was not as simple as he had initially thought. 
At some point, the boy found himself feeling afraid as the monster bound his hands and feet, leaving him with no ideas of saving himself whatsoever. But shortly after, Chu's teeth came into play as he bit through the nearest tentacle of the monster, which irritatedly threw its victim out of its grasp. The toppled monster, which had ruined the boy's home, seemed defeated and probably slunk off to mourn in its darkness, while Chu's house quickly restored itself with magic. The boy returned to his former state, and Sonny was pleased with the work of his brave wizard, adding that when the monster disappears, the power of darkness follows it. Chu was astonished by the monster's method of attack, and began to inquire of Sonny what it was all about. But the latter innocently added that he hadn't had the chance to inform him of all the intricacies of their cooperation. The next day greeted another character of this story with the same warm sun and the aroma of coffee wafting from all sides, rejoicing in all these little things as he went to work. Jin entered the cafe with a shout of joy at seeing Chu until he noticed his partner's troubled state. The boy immediately began to inquire what had happened to him, but Chu replied that he simply couldn't sleep all night, and he didn't want to confess to his friend about the nightmare he had experienced. His terror was interrupted by the alarm clock ringing in his ear for the past ten minutes, and Chu, waking up, feverishly triumphed that this time, thankfully, he had only seen and experienced a dream. Among the pillows, the boy found Sonny, who was just murmuring a question about how well he had slept. And without waiting for an answer, he announced that he wanted to sleep and asked Chu not to disturb him. While the boy was coming to terms with the night he had just experienced, pondering what was happening in his life, suddenly trembling, Jin appeared before him and begged him to catch a spider. Chu displayed heroism by capturing the eight-legged creature, which they were now planning to release together to roam freely so that it could live and frighten someone else. His friend quickly worked his legs, saving his own skin, and Chu commented on the situation, recalling the saying that if a spider comes in the morning, it brings a good guest with it. Jin laughed and expressed the assumption that the guest would at least not resemble this eight-legged creature. And suddenly, Chu noticed Huang approaching their cafe, who smiled kindly at his friend upon hearing the question of what he was doing here at this hour. Huang replied that he was supposed to have classes, but an opportunity arose, so he decided to visit the cafe. When Chu asked why he had come so far, he learned that Huang wanted to tell him something. Chu invited Huang to come inside and have breakfast with them, offering fresh Americano and delicious tiramisu. Jin observed these two boys until an unforeseen event occurred. Chu barely had time to turn around when he saw that Huang was completely covered in cobwebs from head to toe, suspended from the ceiling, and unconscious. Jin, in utter horror, could only mutter to Chu that the spider was inside the building again. The main character, now being a chosen wizard by Sunny, remained composed and only managed to request his partner to wait for him a little longer, promising to return soon. The spider monster quickly ensnared its second victim with its cobwebs, but upon realizing that this was not the young man it had come for, it sat dissatisfied, waiting for the next boy. After a few minutes, Chu appeared in battle attire in the hall and declared that he had no intention of sparing it for daring to harm his friends, especially Huang. The spider monster slyly hissed that such threats wouldn't hinder him from executing his plan and prepared to attack the boy. Chu had enough strength and agility to avoid any of the monster's webby spits, which pleased him. But the creature remarked that spiders don't spin webs to attack prey. Then the boy heard what sounded like a playful assertion from the monster that they do it precisely to capture their prey. The spider creature didn't hide the fact that after capturing prey, they slowly dissolve it, then consume it while closely approaching the boy and dripping a few drops of its saliva onto him. At first, Chu noticed his body becoming warm. Then he felt weakness, and with alarm, he asked the monster what it had done to him. The spider monster reiterated that it and its kin slowly dissolve captured prey and then consume it, while the boy, in the meantime, felt his body tensing up and consciousness slipping away, while the creature continued its dirty deeds. At one point, the monster noticed a look of pity in Chu's eyes, directed towards Huang, and immediately suspected how to manipulate the new wizard to prolong its enjoyment of the hunt. When the spider decided to deal with Huang, Chu found a way to break free and attack the monster, pouncing on it from behind and tearing off its limbs in the process. As everything concluded and the boys bid farewell, Huang realized he had dozed off and was now running late for class. He also inquired of Chu why he hadn't woken him up, but Chu just joked and urged him to catch the bus. The boy felt deeply saddened because his friend had come to his workplace for the first time in a long while, and now everything turned out quite differently than he had expected. However, he then received a compliment from Jin, expressing admiration for his talent and confidence in his abilities akin to a wizard. Chu was now puzzled as to why Jin suddenly remembered his encounter with the monster, but his interlocutor continued to find every detail pleasant. Then he asked Chu directly if what he had seen was a secret, 
In the evening, while at home, Sonny asked the boy how his day went, once again admitting that he had been very sleepy in the morning. Frustrated by the events of the day, Chu immediately went to punch the punching bag, saying that he nearly lost his mind when a strange spider monster attacked him. Sonny, full of zest for life, replied to the wizard that since he was alive, he must have done a good job. When he noticed the unfamiliar boy behind Cheyu, he quickly remarked that he was just an ordinary toy. Jin smiled at the tail wagger and responded that he had actually seen and heard everything, so pretending was futile. Chu explained to Sonny that after the monster disappeared, memories of this boy remained with him, so he brought him home to figure out what had happened. Sonny decided to hit Jin several times, probably to knock the memory out of him, but he only started getting upset and complaining about it. As a result, the pink cloud informed those present that there was a group of people who had the ability to resist any memory spells and even marveled that such a person appeared so soon in the path of his wizard. Sonny hurried to arm himself with a large knife, declaring that if magic couldn't handle such a person, then physical force would be used to suppress any memories. Jin begged to spare his life, promising not to reveal any secrets, and he insisted that he didn't want the main character to have problems because of him. Sonny replaced anger with mercy, and Jin, among other things, noticed a book on mastering swordsmanship, while Chu hurried to explain that his weapon was a sword, but he couldn't fight properly with it yet. The boy asked his friend to hold the book open at a certain page, while he took his monster-punishing sword in hand and confessed that when he was still a student, he had quite good physical training. Sonny asked Chu to close his eyes while he remained in that position and also to concentrate his energy on the tips of his fingers. Then this pink sphere commanded its wizard to utter a specific phrase and attack with a shout at the work desk. Chu hastened to utter the suggested phrase and deliver a shining blow to the furniture, exactly as Sonny recommended him to do. The pink sphere solemnly announced that it had given the boy more strength, proud of itself, and Chu indignantly asked Sonny why he was telling him all these details only now. The main character even shed a tear, remembering how scared he was during the attack of the spider monster, but no one listened to his suffering. Jin tried to comfort his friend with words that all this indeed sounded extremely dangerous, after which he asked his partner why he was doing all this. Chu thought for a moment, then confessed that he had one wish for which he was willing to endure even such danger. Jin reacted understandingly and added that if Chu really continued with this endeavor, he was ready to support him in every way. The main character was surprised by his friend's words, after which he thanked him, and Jin explained that he was even willing to stand in for him during shifts if he had to take time off work to fight monsters. Sonny, perhaps, was even happier than everyone else and hastened to commend the wizard, saying that he had gained a wonderful assistant. And suddenly, they heard a loud knock on the door, as well as the voice of the landlady, who asked him to open the door so she could make sure everything was okay, explaining her visit with the noise coming from his apartment. Chu begged Sonny to restore the smashed table to its original form, but the pink cloud kindly replied that it couldn't do that. While the boy accused the tail sphere of telling him to attack this table himself, the landlady was eager to see the tenant. The next day, Chu was completely at a loss with his choice of clothing for the meeting with Huang, which he had been waiting for so long, and Sonny unsuccessfully tried to help him. The boys had agreed some time ago to go to a movie together, which Huang really wanted to see. Chu now asked Sonny not to follow him and not to cause him any trouble, but instead to relax in the company of their friend. The main character eventually settled on a casual outfit, although he was a bit saddened because he wanted to look fashionable. Approaching the cinema, Chu called his friend to confirm if he was there and informed him that he had practically reached the cinema himself. Since Huang was already seated inside, he asked his friend not to rush, reassuring him that everything was fine. Their conversation was accidentally interrupted, and Chu became worried, so he hurried inside to go up to the required floor. He entered the elevator and even heard the system announce that the doors were closing. Everything seemed fine, but Chu couldn't shake off the feeling of anxiety. When he began to analyze the situation, he surmised that perhaps because today was a weekday, there might not be anyone else here. He barely had time to be distracted by any other thoughts when suddenly thick smoke began to fill the elevator. And of course, he concluded that there must be a fire on the floor he was heading to. In addition, Chu noted that not only was there nobody around, but he couldn't even hear a sound. So the whole situation was undeniably unnerving for him. Therefore, he decided to be on high alert anticipating a monster attack at any moment. He stepped out of the elevator and began calling out for his friend, trying to spot anyone amidst the thick smoke. Chu realized that he was putting Huang in danger all this time and berated himself with less than flattering terms. Suddenly, his friend emerged from the smoke, also calling out for him and trying to find him. Seeing Huang whole and unharmed, Chu couldn't contain his joy. 
The guy told his friend that the fire extinguisher turned out to be malfunctioning, and Chu doubted whether he could just leave without making sure whether the monster was the cause of this incident or not. As a result of what happened, Huang suggested that Chu stay overnight at his place, but the guy was hesitant whether it would be the right decision on his part, especially considering the element of surprise, but still accepted the offer from his friend. While Chu lay in the room waiting for Huang, he found himself thinking that this room hadn't changed at all. He also pondered how every trace, which had been so familiar, eventually became unfamiliar to him. In his thoughts, the guy spent quite some time until his friend appeared and offered to find some comfortable clothes for him, but he still decided to return home, although Huang didn't understand his desires at all. Chu regained consciousness in the elevator, remembering Huang's words that illusion is just deception and he needs to turn back. When he exited the elevator, he saw people calmly moving about and chatting among themselves while he realized that he had been in the elevator in a state of forgetfulness for an hour and a half. Soon, Huang approached him and informed him that he was worried, and Chu learned that the movie had already ended and his friend was hungry. They decided to head to a diner to satisfy their hunger, and Chu wanted to clear his head after the strange dream that overcame him in the elevator, as well as from the situation as a whole. The protagonist asked his friend why he waited for him all this time, and didn't even ask now what happened and what caused his delay. Huang replied to Chu that he knows him well enough, and even better knows, that he is not the type of person who breaks promises without a significant reason. Then the interlocutor suggested that perhaps Chu had faced some difficulties that were difficult to explain. Huang didn't expect an answer to this question, and then added that even if Chu had a few secrets, it was not a reason for hatred, and asked him to share only when he was ready, to which Chu had nothing left but to confirm the interlocutor's words. As the friends headed back home, Chu caught himself thinking that although they couldn't watch the movie together, he was still glad to meet Huang and overall had a good time. As they were saying goodbye, to Chu's great surprise, Huang invited him to spend the night at his place, just like in his dream in the elevator. Then the guy began to worry, wondering if the illusion had taken control of his mind again. He decided to agree to Huang's proposal, although he was completely lost in guesses about how to respond correctly and how to behave. Chu tried to compare that illusion with real events, while Huang, in the meantime, brought a set of clothes and informed the guest that he himself would sleep on the floor, offering him the bed to rest well. As much as Chu wanted to get some sleep, it was difficult for him to fall asleep until finally he drifted off soundly. It's necessary to get to know Huang a little, who also lost his father early, being still a teenager. He took this loss hard and even refused to eat, although his mother begged him to eat at least a little. To try to lift her child out of such a depressed state, the woman suggested he befriend a boy whose family had moved into their house on the first floor, assuming that this way he would have a friend and would go through the mourning process with him. When young Huang agreed to his mother's proposal, the woman hurried to meet the family, who had recently signed a rental agreement and whom she found very pleasant people. She informed Chu's parents that the workers had finished laying the floor and they would soon be able to move their things and fully settle in, to which the young family thanked the homeowner and even confessed their concern that their son had no one to be friends with. So now they expressed joy that there was a boy his age here. The boys really bonded and spent a lot of time together. Huang's mom even worried that lately she didn't have enough time to spend with her son and didn't know how to fix the situation. One time, Huang came as usual to meet Chu, but found workers carrying out packed furniture and the family's belongings. When the boys met a little later, Huang hurried to ask his friend if they were moving, and Chu explained that all this was because of his father's work, and then added that it all happened suddenly, so he didn't even have time to tell him. Huang asked his friend not to leave, arguing that he didn't want to be separated and even suggested moving in with him. Chu reassured his friend, saying that everything would be fine, and pointed out that someday they would live close by again, after which he sealed his promise by linking their pinky fingers. Chu really didn't want to leave, and even on the way, he cried as he left their familiar place until he saw the city they were supposed to go to. He didn't even have time to ask his parents what this big city was like before it collapsed and pulled people along, leaving many wounded as well. Huang's mom learned from the news that the bridge had collapsed and the rescue operation had already begun and had been going on for several days because the accident had claimed many lives. And the host also noted that the cause of the collapse, as before, remained unknown. Days passed and the woman couldn't reach her son, who never left his room and constantly refused to eat. When they learned that Chu's family was also involved in the accident, Huang's mother had to try even harder to reach her son to somehow comfort her distressed child. But all she heard in response was Huang's ultimatum, informing his mother that he would only eat together with Chu. One day, the phone rang in their house, and when Huang's mother heard the news, she could not hold back her tears and sincerely thanked the caller. After the call, she told her son that she had received a call from the hospital informing her that Chu had finally regained consciousness. They rushed to meet the injured boy, 
and Huang's mother decided to ask her son one question that was important to their family. When he was about to answer, she asked her son how he felt about Chu living with the family after his recovery. Huang was very happy to hear this news, and his mother explained to her son that Huang's parents had now gone to heaven and that he had no other relatives, so she decided to take him in. The woman tried to explain to her child that Chu had no one else to take care of him but them, but her son did not object to his mother's decision. Now the morning came and Chu woke up, but he felt very distracted. He immediately noticed that Huang was awake and had even put his things away. He got up, walked around, and found that the owner of the apartment was not home at all, and was even a little offended that he did not wake him up when he left. But then, he found a note where Huang explained that the guest was sleeping so soundly that he did not want to wake him up, and also asked for a snack before leaving the house. Chu was walking back to his house and enjoying the beautiful weather and good mood when he came across a box with live and furry contents. He began to look around, trying to figure out where the owner of this cute puppy was, and even got angry at how he could leave him in the middle of the road. But then he found the inscription, which contained a request along with a plea for the furry to take him to his home, and Chu could not resist, although he tried to refuse the puppy's request at first, referring to the fact that he already had one very harmful animal in his house. As a result, the boy returned home with the box and all its contents, and with the idea that he would try to negotiate with Sonny, begging the dog to behave well. While Chu was playing with the dog, calling him a good boy, Sonny tried to explain to the wizard that this good boy might well turn out to be a dangerous monster. For some reason, the protagonist did not think about it, and only now began to think that even such a cute furry animal can be anything. Although then, he looked again into those eyes full of loyalty and announced to Sonny that his assumption was completely unfounded and that this could not be the case, to which the pink cloud made a displeased grimace. Chu told Sonny that they had even managed to visit the doctor, who told them that the dog was in perfect health, and added that they would be going for an additional vaccination next week. Chu asked Sonny to look after the dog while he went to work, but the dog continued to show his displeasure. But the boy was sure of himself and convinced Sonny that he was not a monster at all, but a real angel, and even threatened the pink-cheeked man, begging him not to touch the fluffy dog, and went to the shower. Everything was fine until Chu heard someone calling his name, so he decided to cautiously see who it was that suddenly wanted to see him. Sonny tried to explain that it was the puppy he had picked up and brought home, but Chu was more interested in the reverse transformation of his friend, who was just asking his owner, with tears in his eyes. If he didn't need him anymore, Chu was momentarily confused as to what to do in this situation, but then decided to quickly transform into his martial form and use his shining wizard's kick again. When the fight was over, the protagonist was sprawled out in his mother's clothes on the kitchen floor because he had jumped out of the shower unclothed and was completely powerless and even thought that he was facing an imminent death at this rate. A couple of hours later, he was visited by Jin, who immediately told him that he looked terrible. The friend told him that he needed to get some sleep and promised to cover for him at work and asked him to tell him the details of what had happened. Chu said that he had been taking a shower and just forgot to put his clothes on, but Jin doubted that was the case. Sonny volunteered to confirm Chu's story, to which Jin said that he was not really that stupid, and added that he was waiting for an honest answer. Their conversation was interrupted by a phone call from Huang, and Jin saw Chu's reaction as he continued to watch him. The latter became an unwitting listener to the conversation, and then muttered under his breath as he took out the medicine he had bought for his friend that he wished he could be stupid sometimes. Chu finally had a snack and drank the medicine, then thanked Jin and told him that he would pay him back twice as much next time. The boy told Chu that he shouldn't worry about it because he understood that he was sick because he had been working too hard, and then asked him again if he had to be a wizard. The protagonist shared his experiences and admitted that sometimes fighting monsters is not as scary as telling someone the truth. The boy told his friend that after the accident, he felt like he was surrounded by darkness and admitted that he was afraid to live. In addition, he had nightmares that he could not get rid of for many years and walked around feeling out of place. Jin found out that once a distracted Chu was almost hit by a car, and only thanks to Huang did he survive, because the latter simply pushed him off the road in the last seconds before the collision. The protagonist also told his partner that when he was sick, it was his friend who was always there in his bed, guarding his sleep, being the only light that helped him survive again and again. Jin this time learned almost everything that was in the heart of this suffering young man, who honestly revealed the secret corners of his soul, even though he was in a state of fever. Chu continued to talk about the traps of his fears that he had been in since childhood and that he could not admit to. The protagonist at the end of his confession, so to speak, admitted that he would like his friend to save him again. Chu apologized for having said too much and said that he was very sleepy, and Jin suggested that the medication was probably just taking effect, and then wished his partner a speedy recovery. As he was about to leave, he saw a message on Chu's phone, 
where Huang wrote that he had found his charger and would be at the cafe in the evening to return it. Jin did not do anything, even though he knew that Chu would sleep through the evening and not go to any cafes. In the evening, he ran into Huang, who was clearly not happy to see him, expecting to meet Chu. Huang pulled himself together and finally asked the boy if he had made a mistake and come to replace Chu. Jin replied that his partner was unable to come out and he was filling in for him. And when he asked what he could do for him, the guy said that Chu had left his charger at his house and he had brought it to him. Jin suggested to Huang that he leave the package at the cafe and he would give it to Chu during the meeting, but he flatly refused, saying that he would just come back another time and give it to him. Jin gave the boy a final word, telling him to take good care of his brother. Huang was curious to know why the young man was saying such things to him all of a sudden, and he even asked him out loud. Jin replied that he thought Chu was a great guy and wanted nothing but the best for him, so he asked for reciprocity from others toward his partner. Huang didn't like what he heard, so he just threw back a phrase that he could take care of everything himself, but finally thanked Jin for his advice and left the cafe. Huang himself sent Chu the 27th message, which was never read, like all the others. When the protagonist woke up and saw his phone, he was extremely surprised by such attention from Huang, and Sunny, meanwhile, was glad that his wizard had finally gotten enough sleep and saw that a good night's sleep was good for the guy. Chu hurriedly called Huang and told him that he had not been feeling well yesterday, so he asked his partner to cover for him at work and then explained that he was unable to answer his message because he had fallen asleep early and slept soundly. They agreed to meet, and that was the end of their conversation, and the pink balloon cloud asked his wizard curiously how the conversation went and reminded him that he should never be nervous. The next day, Chu and Jin decided to ride a moped with a breeze to the sea, but they were going so fast that even the main character was seriously worried. But then, when they got there, Chu was even mesmerized because he hadn't expected to see such beauty, so he was deeply impressed all the time while Jin went to get a drink. The guy apologized for driving so fast and even offered to take a bus or train back, but Chu refused because he was having fun, as he admitted out loud. Jin decided to tell his partner about Huang's visit to the cafe yesterday, but Huang beat him to it and said he already knew about it, and then began to lament that he was wasting the best moments of his life hunting monsters and couldn't even keep his promises because of the monster's interference. Chu even suggested that he was just completely unlucky and a total failure as well as too stupid and boring. Jin, at one point, suggested that the Coca-Cola they were drinking must have been spiked with alcohol because Chu was acting a bit out of character, even shedding tears over something. Jin tried to change the subject, but Chu started talking about something else and then got distracted. He heard an enticing melody coming from the water and asked Jin if he heard the same sound coming to his ears. Chu began to listen to the music, and at one point, together with Sunny, they shouted in unison that these sounds were made by none other than a monster. The protagonist turned to his partner and ordered him to wait here, saying that it would be dangerous for him in the water. And he grabbed a pink cloud ball and rushed into battle, promising Jin to return soon. Chu took out his magic tool and hurried to transform into a wizard, putting on his own costume as he went. Except this time, for some reason, the super warrior costume was that of a super mermaid. Although in this case, it would be more accurate to say a mermaid wizard. Chu immediately plunged into the depths of the sea, holding his battle trident, and swam to the source of the melody that was so inviting. It should be said that he was very pleased with the powers he had gained as a wizard, because this time he could breathe underwater and had considerable strength. Now the protagonist was ready to look for the monster and defeat it where he went, deftly moving in the water with the help of his tail. He looked around and noticed that this place was full of sunken ships, and this fact alarmed him. A jinn sat on the shore waiting for his friend until an elderly couple came up to him and asked him why he was sitting there. The man asked him not to even think about going into the sea, which puzzled Jin to no end, and he asked the man what he wanted to tell him. Then the stranger said that the sea monster had been hungry for a long time and suggested that it was probably looking for a victim again, and then asked the boy to be careful. And Chu finally found the source of the melody and even froze for a moment, watching the unexpected creature sitting near the wreck and rubbing the seashell with satisfaction. But then the monster merman raised his eyes and ordered his guest to come closer to him and do the most interesting thing, and Chu unwittingly obeyed him. Sunny tried to talk some sense into Chiu that this was a dangerous business, to say the least, but his wizard was already enchanted by the underwater monster and even begged him to play for him again. When the seashell that belonged to the monster stopped making a sound, the boy finally came to his senses, for the witchcraft had ceased to affect him. Chu immediately rushed to deal with the monster merman and struck him quite hard, after which he broke the seashell, which had been charming potential victims with its melody and had already killed many. The sea monster recovered a little from the wizard's blows, and the merman even managed to call Chu some unpleasant names, after which he received a portion of the protagonist's shining blow. 
The effect of the latter was noticed not only underwater, but also above the surface of the sea. Although, after its action, the merman wizard immediately turned into an ordinary guy on the spot. This ordinary boy could not swim, so he slowly sank to the bottom. He was losing the precious air from his lungs, and his consciousness was also losing, slowly clouding the mind of the protagonist. And he would have died if Jin hadn't rushed to his rescue and actually pulled him out of the other world. After Chu and Jin went to the seaside, the protagonist repeatedly finds himself thinking that strange things began to happen to his partner. And in particular, he began to make many mistakes in his work. This was evidenced by the bucket that was already full of broken dishes. So Chu was seriously worried that at this rate, they would soon lose all the dishes. So he decided to talk to Jin to get things straight. The protagonist directly asked his partner what happened on the day they went to the sea, but Jin could not concentrate on this conversation at all, and therefore simply nervously replied that nothing happened. Chu was even surprised by the boy's answer, confessing to Jin that he didn't remember anything except that he had saved him, and then thanked him for saving him. The protagonist also shared with his partner that he had reflected on his life and shared his thoughts about how he used to worry that Huang could not live a different, free life because he had to take care of him. Chu even breathed a sigh of relief when he told Jin his decision that he had accepted that it might not be exactly what he wanted in life, and then added that he realized he could feel comfortable even so, no matter which way this life turned out for him. When they finished work and were on their way home, they started talking about meeting up at a bar for a drink, but Chu wanted to get something tasty, preferably meat. But then he focused his attention on the toy store window, even though Jin reminded him that they were going to have a drink and a delicious dinner. The protagonist left with his friend, but his thoughts remained at that toy store window. The next day, Chu returned to the same toy store and stared at one toy that particularly caught his eye because it strongly resembled his friend Huang. The shopkeeper noticed Chu's curiosity and looked outside to invite him inside, emphasizing that he could look around and even hold the toy. But Chu replied that it was fine for him to look at the item he was interested in. The shopkeeper explained in a good-natured and unobtrusive way that his guests did not have to buy anything because he was pleased when someone was interested in his creations, and the protagonist bought into the stranger's pleasing words. He went into the store and began to look at the shelves with attractive toys, but he caught himself thinking that he was accompanied by strange feelings, as if he had come to a very bad place. The shopkeeper saw his guest's wary reaction and, in the same attention-seeking manner, commented good-naturedly that he was a little uncomfortable with the way he was looking at him and began to apologize for his behavior. The master asked Chu not to worry and handed the guest a cute fox that looked very much like a toy he had as a child. So the protagonist even began to squeeze it until he felt a needle prick his finger. Chu automatically grabbed his finger in his mouth and said that it hurt, and the shopkeeper expressed his regret, and then explained that the fox was made recently and suggested that perhaps a pin was left in it, and the protagonist sincerely replied that it was nothing to worry about, and added that he was rather frightened by the suddenness of the injection. And then his eyes swam. His head spun, and he finally fell asleep, falling into a sound sleep, and the satisfied shopkeeper finished his sentence by saying that it would be nice to treat the wound, while continuing to smile his spider smile. After a while, Chu opened his eyes and almost immediately realized that he was in the strange man's puppet shop, and he also remembered what had happened to him. When he tried to get up, he felt as if he had stepped on something, and when he started to get up further, he found himself wearing not just a dress, but the whole image of a beautiful doll. So now he wondered what had happened during the time he had been unconscious.